Hello and welcome to The Slice. My name is Michael and today we have a very special guest. Now, I am very conscious that I say that every week, but in my opinion, everyone is special. So we have got Rob. How are you, Rob? I'm very well, Michael. How are you? I'm very well. What's the weather like in Wales? Because I'm not allowed in at the moment, so I wouldn't know what the weather was like. <laughs> yeah, it's just rain <laughs> as usual. Yeah, it's probably about the same here, to be fair. Um, have you had a good week? Yeah, it's been a really busy week and it's been a varied week, which I always love, to be honest. So, yeah, it's been a good week. Good, good. So have you seen the show before? I have. I'm an avid watcher, yes. <sighs> And this is what this is what I like to hear. So you know that you've got 10 minutes. And when I start the 10 minutes, we have a conversation. We find out who you are. We will ask you some video related questions. And at the end of the 10 minutes, that's it. How does that sound? Sounds like a plan. Ready for me to start the timer? Yeah, indeed. Good stuff. So the timer has started. So, Rob, for anybody out there that doesn't know who you are, who are you? What do you do? So my day job is um, a director and an independent financial advisor for Celtic Financial, who are multi-award winning independent financial advisors. So that's my sort of bread and butter work. Mm -hmm. um, I also am a trustee and the finance chair for NUKIS, which is Wales's largest carer support charity. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, I'm a trustee and a director of the Celtic Incubator, which is a startup space in mould for, for new businesses, new entrepreneurs looking to sort of get on with a new business idea. Um, and I also run the Celtic Community Network, which is a not-for-profit business networking group as well. So a couple of different strings to what we do, but the, the, the bulk of my work is financial advice. I tell you what, I only knew of two of those things. You've just literally thrown a bomb on me. Um, so tell me a little bit about it. So you, you are obviously very much community uh, led. So tell me how you got into all of that. <clears throat> That's a really good question. So the charity work with New Kiss in particular started probably about four years ago when I helped them with some pension work. And then from there, I sort of got wrapped up and found out more about the work that they did and wanted to get involved as a trustee. So uh, in a few months, I think it will be about three years that I've been a trustee with, with New Kiss. Um, the incubator, the startup space, that was an idea that we had just before lockdown, actually, with myself, um, Emily and Craig. So there's three of us involved in that. And we just wanted to offer space and financial support for new businesses. Um, where that comes from, the community stuff, really, um, for me, our clients are the community. So my, my belief system is that if you invest in your community, you're also investing in your own business. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the, the, the community and the environment is just crucially important. And it's, it's part of our business plan uh, as a business as a whole. So you are based in North Wales and mm -hmm. I'm probably about 10, 20 minutes uh, from North Wales. So I'm not too far down the road, but I've got to say that no Wales in general is very good for startup business. There's a lot out there that obviously in England, we don't have those kind of facilities. Um, how, how good is it for people in the North Wales area to actually get access to starting up new businesses and having that support? I think you're right. I think there's some really brilliant businesses in North Wales and there's a lot of people with really good business ideas and there's a really good networking scene as well. And there's a strong sort of community spirit as well, where everyone's keen to help each other. So I, I think that's one of the big things North Wales got has got going for it. I think business support in general, especially startups, it's needed now more than ever. Sadly, with COVID, there's lots of redundancies coming through. There's going to be more going into next year as changes with the furlough scheme take place. So I think we need to be supporting the new entrepreneurs because for me, small businesses are the backbone for a strong economy. If one fails, it doesn't have the same impact as if you look at an Airbus where suddenly a thousand jobs go. So, you know, having lots of small businesses creates this diversification, reduces risk of jobs. So we, we need to stick everything we can behind it. And that's where our incubator idea comes from, really. If we can help one or two people, it just makes that little difference. 100%. So in terms of obviously businesses, new businesses and the, the pandemic that we've currently been in since March, how have you seen you know, new businesses coming through? Have you had to deal with a lot of businesses that have maybe gone out as well as businesses coming in? 
Yeah, it's heartbreaking, to be honest, at times, Michael. Some really good businesses that have folded because of no fault of their own. Um, we've tried to support that with grants, with business advice and contacting other experts to try and drum up as much support as we can. Sadly, you know, some still get through that net and we, we can't help and, you know, things worsen for them. Um, so, yeah, it's been heartbreaking. We've seen at our own place at Florence House where we're based there was an aviation engineering firm based there with three people. They've all been made redundant and that office space is now empty. And I, I walk past it because right. it's my office and it's a, a daily reminder of actually it, it's not great at the moment. And it, it's awfully sad for people who are losing jobs and losing businesses. And I 100% feel for them, as I'm sure you do as a business owner. You put a lot of your soul <clears throat> and personal life into a business. And when it fails, it's uh, it's devastating. It is. And, and, you know, we were just having a, a, a bit of a joke before we came on to the show about, you know, oh, how busy it's been. And, and you know, I think you can never take that for granted, especially at a time like this. You know, when I was saying to you, you know, I just don't have time to think at the moment because obviously people are really understanding that video is important. And the only way to survive is to be out there, to be in the mind's eye of uh, people, potential clients. So, yeah, I mean, I would never take that for granted, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I do remember you posting uh, about the uh, available space um, and it is it is heartbreaking because, you know, you put years worth of uh, hard work into something and for it to just be taken away uh, for, for something that's out of your control, it must be really heartbreaking. It is, yeah, and it's for the families as well, isn't it? It's not just that yeah. person losing the job, it's their family then that's uh, taking <coughs> pieces with them it does and it has a knock-on effect you're absolutely right so in terms of the pandemic in terms of uh, your video journey um you've been doing video since well since the moment i met you really um and you you know you you work with a company that um is producing some video content for you and it is incredible so how did you when did you realize that video was a big thing for you and how has it been during this pandemic so eight, eight or so, coming up to eight years ago when I first became a director in financial services, been in financial services 15 years, but about seven years ago, I decided to ultimately become self-employed and become a director. I didn't have any clients. So the first thing I realized is we had to be on social media. Mm. I think that's where videos come along from. So social media back in the day was very much about posts, about tweets. And that, that got us so far. Then I think clear there was a clear difference then about three or four years ago where video crept in from images. And since then, video's just become king. So probably about two years ago, we got really serious about video doing, you know, sort of mini discussion points, doing little adverts, doing, you know, maybe some sort of interviews on video. And it, it's just helped build our brand. It's helped build our um, awareness with the local community. And it's helped explain what we do a lot better as well, because financial services, you all probably know, it's very jargon heavy. So if we can try and cut through that with just good video content, it really helps. So, yeah, for me, video is king. Yeah, I, I've got to admit, I mean, I have a, I've had a few uh, emails uh, from Emily, who, who works at Celtic, and yeah, I said, yeah, I think video might be better for me. Uh, very much a visual learner because sometimes, you know, when when you're reading through an email that is quite heavy with uh, with any type of legal um, information, it can just be like, whoa, what's this? So, um, so yeah, I think video is definitely king. And I also think that you know, it it constantly breaks down barriers people always put their head in the sand especially when it comes to finances people don't want to talk about it so have you found that with the videos that you've produced it's actually had a lot of people come and say well actually I didn't know you did this or um can you help me with this because I saw your videos on social media yeah no we've definitely seen that we've definitely seen more people engage with us more people ask questions more people get in touch and make appointments we get a lot of appointments each week from social media and a lot of the content we put on there is video orientated or you know image based at least so yeah it's definitely helped with new business and also engaging with existing clients as well because we we get paid to look after you know clients on an ongoing basis yeah. so if we can keep them engaged keep them happy and keep them informed and part of our team then it adds a lot of value to what we're doing and what yeah. they're getting from for their money i think also when you think finances i mean that could be such a broad range of services couldn't it it's 
you know, where, where do you actually start to think, right, this is what we're going to create? Because what I've noticed from your video journey is that you've tried different things. You've not just gone, right, we'll just get loads of testimonials on the website and that's that. I mean, testimonials are great, but I think when you're creating video, especially for social media, you have to have a nice balance of variety. Um, and I've seen some of the new stuff that you've done where you've really gone down that whole cinematic road. I mean, the, you know, the quality is just incredible. So I, I absolutely take my hat off to you. And you're not scared to try new things, are you? You only live once. Do you know what? I say that all the time. Um, but no, it, it's, it's absolutely right. And I think what you're doing is definitely working for you. And I think had you not have been embracing video, do you think you would have suffered? Yeah, absolutely. The return on investment for us has been quite clear um, on both winning new clients and also securing the existing clients we've got. It, it's, an, it's a no-brainer for me, Michael. Uh, and, and just on this sort of this cinematic experience, we've got a really exciting project lined up at the moment. Oh. Um, and it's going to be about the real cost of financial advice. It's going to be quite a hard-hitting mini documentary, I'm hoping. So I'm quite excited. Yeah. So again, it's something completely different. <clears throat> That we've not done before and i think this is what you've got to keep doing you've got to keep sort of challenging yourself keep innovating keep doing something different to stand out and oh there you go this is a timer there you go there you go all done how did you find that yeah it's great thank you yeah to be fair i think we we, we did i mean i i was worried that we weren't going to get everything on that one but i think we we kept a tight ship and we got we got as much as we could out of those 10 minutes. Uh, it, that's the problem, though. It, it just flies far too fast. Um, do you think there's anything you didn't cover? Meaning of life. Did we get that in there? <laughs> I think we did some way, yeah. Yeah, I think we said, yeah, we only live once. So thank you very much for coming on the show. If you would like to watch any previous episodes, you can head over to our YouTube account, which is youtube.com forward slash take the cape pro. If you'd like to see any of the latest videos, you can hit the subscribe button and you'll get all the latest videos on your account. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon.